Tell us a little bit about this, because she's the heroine of the story, Evie, isn't she? Yeah, so Evie's the main character, and she's loosely based on me as a child. Okay. Um, and, yeah, she gets loads of adventures. She gets set on lots of adventures. And the main premise of the book is she's given this uh, magical bracelet that's a present from her grandma in Jamaica. Um, and it, yeah, it takes her and on She could talk to animals, and she could talk to... She meets a unicorn in this story. She does, yeah. I think the nice thing is, is that it's got a sporty theme running through it, but the magic's there, and, yeah. yeah talking to animals and the main animal and dog in the book is is my dog Milo which is great so oh. yeah lots of childhood memories brought into it and um, yeah hopefully it's going to be a why, great um, why was she in what way was she based uh, on you because um, I I in the book she's actually one of those little girls that doesn't quite fit in um, were you like that yeah, I suppose as a child I was quite shy and um, Evie in the book has just moved to a new area and she's starting a new school and I really wanted to get, get across that you know, so many girls at that age are you know, quite fearful of life and not sure what direction they want to go in, not sure what they want to do and have all these different challenges and for me being sporty and having something to put your focus in in your direction is really important so I just really wanted a strong key character in my book. How um, old's Reggie now? Uh, it's two and a half now. Two and a half. So yeah. are, you, are you reading the, at the reading stage with him? And... Yeah, so we read loads of different books. And, I mean, this book is a little bit too advanced for him yeah, at the moment. Yeah, sure. we'll have to wait for this one. Yeah, and it's quite girly. But, um, yeah, I'd love to create some more boyish books for him in the future, definitely. And how are you getting on? Because you've retired from, from sport at the top of your game and now you, you, are, you are a mummy. Yeah, do you know, I feel so happy and so privileged that I've been able to have such a fantastic career in sport and, yeah, been able to achieve so much. It must be weird not to get up and go training, though. It's so nice. <laughs> it's so nice, yeah. Especially in February. Yeah, yeah. When, when it's winter and, you know, I always had hill runs and horrible winter training sessions to do and now I can just decide to go out on a run if I want and if the weather's not great, I'll say I'll stay at home today. So, oh, the luxury yeah, it's, it's of that. Nice. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. And we should say a huge congratulations because obviously after the Olympics, you, you've already got your CPE, but then this year in January it's announced that you were going to become a dame. I mean, how yeah. wonderful. Yeah, it was just such a surprise and to have that call before Christmas, you know, I was literally just hoovering the house and then I got a no number call and you're always a bit worried about answering it and I answered and, you know, this lady was saying that, you know, would you receive, you know, would you accept a damehood and... I was just so shocked and I thought it was a bit of a joke. Did you say that? They must get that yeah, all the time. Yeah, well, I kept saying, uh, are you sure? And she's like, yes, for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was just such a great surprise. So and amazing. yeah, What's the process then in that? Because with the, with, you know, with the you know, knighthoods and all that sort of business, sort yes. of, you know, know the, what happens with the, when you're a Dane? So I'm not entirely sure. I need to find out because I'm, I'm going in April to receive it, so that'll be really exciting. Um, but, yeah, it's all, all new to me, so it's going to be a new experience. Amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and as far as far as um, sports concerned and uh, your sport, I suppose you can't ever, you don't fully retire because you'll be, you have friends that are still there, um, you, uh, you'll be watching it and following it on the TV. I mean, after your retirement, um, and this can't happen very often, that, that you actually got, um, got another gold because Tatiana Chenova had had her stripped from her because of, uh, of uh, the doping scandal. Yeah. Um, and so you must watch that with, I suppose, with horror. Yeah, I mean, it was devastating at the time because it was a big year for me going into the, the Olympics in London. And, you know, I put so much energy and effort into being the best I could be that year going into the Olympics. And to come away with a silver medal, I just had that feeling of disappointment and mm. that feeling of, well, what more can I do? Um, and then, yeah, later down the line, you know, a few years later, having been rewarded that gold that I should have had in 2011 was a really strange feeling, um, but also really nice to have it in retirement what as well. What do you feel about the sport, though? What do you... What, it, it, it's so widespread. Yeah, I think particularly over the past few years, it's been devastating to see the stories coming out, what's been happening in Russia. Um, and, yeah, really disheartening as an athlete to know that you've trained so hard and you put all that time and energy into being the best you can be and then you know so many athletes aren't doing it the right way. Can you ever spot that? Did you, did you ever have your suspicions? If you're, you're all in an Olympic village, everyone's very close, mm. did you ever think, that's not right? Yeah, I think so many athletes, you know, look around and think, you know, that's not what you know, something going on there, and particularly with Chenova, mm. her progressions and the way she'd improved and the kind of athlete she was. You know, myself and my support team knew that something probably wasn't quite right, but as an athlete, you can't go pointing the finger and no. you're there to just focus on you performing. So it's very difficult and you have to put a lot of hope and 
respect into the authorities to make sure that they police it in the right way. Mm. And in the meantime, uh, no to the grindstone because there's another book to write, isn't there? Yes, so the next book is going to be out in a few months, so that's pretty much done. But yeah, there's going to be seven, a series of seven. Oh my so gosh. yeah, quite busy, but it's a nice new nice world busy. to be into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'm well, really enjoying it. It's lovely to see you. And I know normally you're sitting at home watching us now, so I it's am, nice yeah, to, nice yeah, to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you.